Pro gives you the tools you need to add text, shapes, logos, and digital images into your project when you use the titler. What you create in the titler is then saved as its own file in the project panel to be used in your project. What's more, you can save the titles created in the titler as templates and use them in other projects as well. You can use the titler to create a title frame for your project or credits at the end, plus much more. When you add titles to your V1 track, they become full screen titles with a black background. If you had titles added to other tracks, they would be transparent, except for the text or other content in the title. In this lesson, we're going to learn about creating a new title, creating a title from a template, adding a title as a template, making a title the default title, the text tools, text and shape properties, styles, creating shapes, arranging texts and shapes, centering, aligning, and distributing shapes, adding a logo, and rolls and crawls. Since closed captioning is also another form of text that you can incorporate into your video projects, we'll discuss this as well toward the end of the lesson. Let's learn how to create a new title. In addition, we'll learn more about how to use the titler. To create a new title, go to File, New Title. If you want, you can change the parameters as well as enter the name for the title. Click OK. The titler then opens. This is where you'll go to add text, shapes, logos, etc. to your project. We've labeled the tools and features in the titler window for you. In the titler window, the titler design panel is where you'll find tools for adding text, including font, font size, and alignment. In addition, to the right of the titler design panel is the Show Background Video button. This will show you the video behind the title. If you click this button, it hides the video background. The buttons that appear on the upper left-hand side of the titler window open different dialog boxes. New title based on current title creates a new title based on an existing one. Roll crawl lets you configure titles for things like rolling credits, etc. The templates button opens a templates dialog box. The title tools panel allows you to create text shapes such as circles and lines. The title actions panel allows you to distribute, align, and more for the title components. And title styles allow you to apply styles to the titles you create. To create a title from a Premiere Pro pre-designed template or a template you've created, go to Title, New Title, Based on Template. You'll then see the Templates dialog box where you'll see the templates. However, if you downloaded your copy of Premiere Pro, you may not see the templates. Instead, you may see a warning. If so, click the yellow hypertext to download the templates. Follow the instructions for downloading and installing the templates. If you don't see the warning with the yellow hypertext, then you can go to this site to download the templates. After you've downloaded them, you'll need to install them. You do this by clicking on the arrow and selecting Import File as Template. Once you're finished, you should see the templates in the Templates dialog box. Click on the name of a template to preview it. Click OK to use the template. You can also add titles that you create to the Templates panel. This process is the same as what we did to add the templates to Premiere Pro. Click the Templates button in the Titler window. Next, click the Panel menu in the upper right corner, then select Import Current Title as Template. You'll then see the Save As dialog box. Name the template, then click OK when you're finished. You can make it so that a template title opens whenever you create a new title. To do this, select the title from the Templates panel. Go to the Panel menu, then select Set Template as Default Still. There are three sets of text tools in the titler. Each set of tools have horizontal and vertical tools. These tools are the horizontal type and vertical type tools, the area type and vertical type tools, and the path type and vertical path type tools. Let's learn how to use these three types of tools. Open a title, then select either the horizontal or vertical type tool. We're selecting the horizontal type tool. Click in the drawing area and the location where you want to start to add text. 
you'll see a blinking bounding box appear. Type the text. When you're finished, click on the selection tool in the tools panel. Click outside of the bounding box. Open a title and then select an area type tool. Next, drag your mouse to create a text box in the drawing area. Now type the text. To change the size of the font, hover your mouse over Font Size in the Title Properties panel, then drag the pointer to change the size of the text. When you're finished adding text, click the Selection tool in the Tools panel, then click outside of the text area. With these tools, you'll create a path, then type the text along the path. Let's show you how it works. We're going to click the Path Type tool. Now we're going to click to add a point at the location we want our path to start. Now click to add additional points and create a path. When you're finished, type to add text. Adding text is just the beginning. Once you've added it, you'll want to format it as well. You can align your text to the left, center, or right by using the alignment controls. The text must be active in order for you to format it. You can click on the text to make it active. Active text appears with the bounding box around it. You can access more formatting options in the Title Properties panel. This is located on the right side of the Titler window. You can make adjustments to the font, and this applies only to text, not to shapes. Make adjustments to color, stroke, and shadow, and this applies to text and shapes and to make changes. Make the text active by clicking on it. Again, active text has a bounding box around it. Here are the ways that Premiere Pro allows you to make changes to the text in the Title Properties panel. Font Family, Style, and Size. These are basic to every program that allows you to enter text, such as Adobe Photoshop and Microsoft Word. Aspect will narrow or widen text. Leading adjusts spacing that occurs between lines of text. Kerning adjusts the space between characters. Tracking adjusts the blocks of text. Baseline shift adjusts the distance between characters and the baseline. The baseline is the line that your text sits on. Slant will slant the text by the degree you specify. Small caps put your text in small caps. There will be a big capital letter to start the word, and then small letters. Small cap size will adjust the size of the small caps. Underline will underline text, however you can't underline text on a path. Distort will allow you to adjust letters on the X and Y axis. To change the color of text, select the bounding box that surrounds the text. Go to the Title Properties panel. Select a fill type from the Fill Type menu. Next, click the Color Swatch. You can then select a color from the Color Picker dialog box. Inner and outer strokes add color that helps your text stand out against the background. Let's show you what we mean by adding strokes. To add an inner stroke, select the text or shape. Remember, you can apply strokes to texts or shapes. Go to the Title Properties panel, then click the Add button that's next to Inner Strokes. Choose the type of stroke you want by clicking the drop-down menu beside Type. You can choose Depth to create a three-dimensional looking stroke, Edge to create a stroke around the edge of shape, Drop Face will copy that shape, then place it behind the original shape. Next, select the fill type and color for the stroke. We're going to use Solid and choose Yellow as the color. Now select the size of the stroke by dragging the value left or right. You can also adjust the opacity. To add an outer stroke, click the Add button next to Outer Strokes. Follow the same steps you did with the inner stroke. A shadow helps the text or shape stand out from the background. Select the text or shape. In the Title Properties panel, put a check in the shadow box. Next, you can choose a color for the shadow.
the opacity or transparency, the angle which will determine the shadow's direction, as well as the distance between the shadow and shape, size, and spread. The spread is the blur in the shadow. Styles are simply shapes and text that have already been formatted for you. A style already has a color, font, stroke, shadow, or any other combination of formatting applied to it. You can use the styles provided to you by Premiere Pro in the Styles panel. You can also create your own. This is helpful when you've spent a good bit of time formatting a text or shape and want to use that same formatting for other strings of text or shapes. To save a style you've created, choose the text or shape that has the formatting applied to it that you want to save as a style. Next, go to the Title Styles panel menu. Select New Style. Type a name for the new style, then click OK. To apply a style, click the text or shape that you want to apply a style to. Go to the Title Styles panel. Click on the style you want to use. To create shapes in Premiere Pro, you'll use the Titler window along with the tools in the Tools panel. To create a shape, choose a style. Next, select a shape from the Tools panel. Drag in the drawing area to create the shape. We drew an ellipse. If you've ever used a program such as Photoshop before, then you're already familiar with stacking shapes. When you stack shapes or text, you specify which shapes appear in the background, which ones come next, and so on and so forth. This allows you to control exactly what people see. To arrange text and shapes, choose the shape or text that you want to arrange. Right-click, choose Arrange, then how you want to stack it. You can bring it to the front, bring it forward, which would be in front of the text or shape that's currently in front of it. Send it to the back, or behind all of the other text and shapes, or send it backward. To center objects, select an object in the Titler window. Go to the Title Actions panel and choose either Vertical Center, Horizontal Center, or both. To align objects, select multiple objects in the Titler window. Remember, to select objects, use the Selection tool, then Shift-click. Go to the Title Actions panel and choose the alignment you want. To distribute objects, select multiple objects in the Titler window. Go to the Title Actions panel and select a distribution pattern. To add a logo to a title, go to the title area, then right-click and select Graphic, Insert Graphic. Select the logo you want to use by finding its location on your computer. Drag the logo to where you want it on the title. You can also drag on its handles to resize it. If you hold down the Shift key while doing this, the size changes will be proportional. Next, go to the Title Properties panel. Go to Transform. You can use these controls to further configure your logo on the title. Rolls and crawls relate to the credits that come at the end of a video. Rolling credits scroll downward. Crawls flow sideways and are usually at the bottom of a frame. To create a roll or a crawl, go to Title in the menu bar of Premiere Pro. Then go to New Title, Default Crawl, or Default Roll. We're going to create a roll. You'll see the New Title dialog box. Select a title name, then click OK. Next, select the Horizontal Text Box tool in the Tools panel. Since this is a rolling title, we're going to draw a large box over the frame by clicking and dragging our mouse. If we were creating a crawl, we would draw a narrow box at the bottom since there would only be one line of text. Add your text. For credits, it may be quicker to copy and paste the text from a word processing program such as MS Word. If text is hidden when you've finished, click the Selection tool and drag to make the box larger. When you're finished, you can format the text as you want using the Title Properties panel. Next, go to the Title Designer panel. Click the Roll Crawl Options button. You'll then see the Roll Crawl Options dialog box. Set the timing options in the Timing section. Start off screen means the title starts out of view. End off screen means the title ends out of view. Pre-roll is the number of frames before the roll begins. Ease in is the number of frames before it gets to the full scrolling speed. In other words, it starts out slow and then picks up speed. 
Ease out means how many frames it takes for the roll to stop. Post roll refers to the number of frames the static title displays before it fades away to black. Click OK. In previous versions of Premiere Pro, including Premiere Pro CS6, you could view closed captions in the program monitor. You could also export them by using third-party hardware. However, you weren't able to create them or edit them. In addition, you couldn't export them with streaming formats. That's all changed with Premiere Pro CC. Premiere Pro CC allows you to edit, create, and export closed captions. With Premiere Pro CC, you can import MOV files with embedded captions. You can also import caption files in various formats, including .scc files. After you import a caption file, you drag it to the timeline. With MOV files, the captions track will appear above the video track. You can then click on the track to edit it in the captions panel. In order to view the captions in the source monitor for MOV files and the program monitor, captions must be enabled in the program monitor. You can also export captions using the Captions tab of the Export Settings dialog box, which we'll discuss in the next lesson. To import closed caption files, go to the Media Browser panel. Go to the folder that contains the captions that you want to import. Right-click on that file and then select Import. Your closed caption file is then in the Project panel. To display closed caption files, drag them to the timeline. They'll appear in a video track. You can expand the track to view the captions. Next, click the Settings button in the Program Monitor. Select Closed Captioning Display – Settings. Choose the standard that matches the source file and captions in the Standard field. In the Stream field, choose the stream. If there's only one caption file, it's usually the first stream. Now go back to the Program Monitor Settings button. Select Closed Captioning Display – Enable. To edit a caption file, double-click on the track in the timeline. Choose the caption type in the Type menu on the left. To change the text in the closed captions, click on the caption text box so that it's active. Then type the changes in. Text is entered into the gray boxes. You can also align and apply other formatting to the text. In addition to importing caption files, you can also create them in Premiere Pro CC. To create a caption file, click the new item icon in the project panel. Select Closed Captions. Adjust the video settings if you need to do that. Click OK. Choose the video standard and stream. For the video standard, choose CEA608 for NTSC or Teletext for PAL. Click OK. The caption file is then created in the project panel. Next, open the captions panel by double-clicking on the track. Edit the captions. If you need to add a caption, click the plus button on the bottom left side of the panel. You can also drag the caption file that's in the project panel over to the timeline so you can preview the captions as you create them.